Hey everybody, Anthony from The Rock Studio here. I'm going to do a short video today about an 8x8 HDMI slash HDBase-T video matrix. This is a 4K matrix switcher and extender over CAT6. We're going to open up the box and see what's inside. We're going to talk about it a little bit, and I hope you all enjoy this video. The product that I'm looking at today is the Brightlink Pro Series 8x8 video matrix. It has 8 HDMI inputs and 8 of each HDMI and HDBase T outputs. Let's talk about the different ways in which you could use a product like this. At its very basic level, you could route one HDMI signal in and split it to eight different outputs. Or you could get more complicated and give multiple HDMI inputs and be able to route any of those inputs to any of the outputs. And that's how I'm going to be using this device. I'm installing 11 TVs into a restaurant. We're going to have one cable box feeding the matrix. We're going to have a computer output for a menu feeding another input of the matrix. And then we'll have something like a Roku or a Fire Stick for private events, parties. A client can come and bring their own laptop or computer and plug in and then display their video source throughout the restaurant. This product would really be helpful in situations like a church where you want to display your sermon or whatever lyrics and stuff up on screens on the side of the stage. You also want to project that to downstage so the singers can see the lyrics as well. Let's say you're a music venue and you want to display the bands playing that night. You want to display the upcoming bands for the next couple days or week or whatever. You'll want to display like your beer menu for the night or any special news or announcements. And you have multiple screens around your venue. You can feed uh, different streams into the switcher and then select which monitors you wish to view that specific information around the venue. Instead of getting real complicated with a setup of HDMI switchers all over the place, this box will handle a lot of that switching and matrixing for you. Now keep in mind a good video matrix isn't going to be inexpensive. However, there might come a point where you need to extend a HDMI cable over the recommended length of 50 feet which is only about 15 and a quarter meters. That's where HDBase-T comes in, because you can convert your HDMI signal to HDBase-T and shoot it over CAT5E, or in our case, CAT6, to a receiver, convert it back to HDMI, or plug back into an HDBase-T compatible device. And you will be able to extend your signal for 4K up to about 40 meters, which is around 131 feet, or for 1080p, you can go to 70 meters, which is about 228 feet. And remember how affordable CAT 5E and CAT 6 cable is compared to HDMI cable. Well, I've already talked about this unit way too much, so let's just take a look at it and check out the rest of the features. CDR. Now I've opened the main box and you can see we've got eight HDBase-T receivers. You can strap these behind your TV or to the back of your TV and come out HDMI, or you can not use these and plug HDBase-T right into a compatible device, like a projector or whatever. This comes with several different IEC type cables. Here's a European one. Here's a UK. Here's the North American one. This one is Australia. I learned that from one of my previous videos. Here's eight remote controls and a, looks like a programming cable. These boxes contain the infrared receivers and emitters. And now I'm gonna flip it around. Let's take a look at the back panel. You've got analog audio input one through eight. You've got your HDMI inputs. You have your infrared inputs and outputs right here, one through eight. And then there's another, a ninth set of jacks that says all. The other half of the back panel contains HD base T outputs, HDMI outputs, analog audio outs, and SPDIF digital audio outs. This is where that serial cable will connect, as well as Ethernet, your power inlet, set up for worldwide voltage, AC 100 to 240 volts, a power switch, and don't forget to connect the chassis ground cable. On each side of the unit, there's two cooling fans and some vents. There's screws here for the rack ears, this being the front of the unit. I'm glad to see there's active cooling on a device like this. I find that nowadays a lot of companies go with passive cooling, and in my experience, the equipment doesn't last nearly as long. Now I'm going to turn this on, and we're going to see how loud those fans are. Well, it's pretty loud, but this is going to sit in a rack that's full of equipment with a lot of fans going anyway. I'm not going to peel this plastic film until I install it. Let's check out the front panel. Pick output 3, map it to input number 1. Output output 4, map it to input number 7. 
So you pick an output, for instance output number one, I'll map it to input number one. I'll pick output number two, map it to input number two. Output number three, map it to input number eight. And that's how that looks. Now output number four, map it to input number one. Now I've got HDMI input one going to channel one and four of the outputs. It's pretty handy. Now let's take a look at one of the HDBase T receivers. On the front side we've got an Ethernet jack, we've got a RS-232 port, there's a micro USB port here for update. Now on the back side of the receiver we've got HDMI out 1 and 2, which I didn't realize you have a second output, infrared out, infrared in, and you have a 12 volt jack, which I won't be using because this will be powered over the HDBase-T bus. Now let's talk about a typical setup scenario. Where I have this matrix, I will have a cable box, say. I'll plug the infrared blaster out of the output of the matrix, the infrared receiver to the input on the HDBase-T receiver, HDMI out going to the TV, the HDMI cable box output going to the matrix. So the HDMI signal will be coming from the matrix to the receiver. The infrared input will be going from the receiver to the matrix. Well, here we are on site in the area where I've installed the Brightlink matrix and I made a giant mistake when I designed this system about nine months ago. We hadn't picked out which matrix switcher we we're going to use. And now that we've got this Brightlink in, there's a big problem because it doesn't fit within the rack. My rack is too shallow and I typically use a shallower rack because I'm not putting gigantic amplifiers or anything in it like that. So I think it's... Um, only about 16 and a half inches deep and the bright link is about 17 and a half plus the length of the cable ends coming out of the back the power cord to HDMI cable stuff like that anyway so we're gonna take a look at it real quick and then uh, I'm gonna have to come up with a solution to mount it on top of the rack it's the only way to to keep it up here out of the way here's what we're looking at right now the bright link sitting on top it is not organized back there yet so don't judge me on that if I go over here the screen will come on and it works. I've checked it out with several of the screens out in the restaurant area and it outputs video and I can pick from the different inputs and so that all works nice. I haven't been able to get the remote controls to work yet. I've been talking to tech support to try to figure out why they're not working but I'll figure that out eventually. Here's what our racks looking like so far. I've got two patch panels here. I've got a 48 port switch. All my like network cabling is black and the TV line stuff is orange so uh, down here we've got a USG. You can watch my video on installing a fan on your USG. This is a Raspberry Pi that's running the unified controller. Don't have a top for this case for some reason. I got one laying around somewhere. And here we've got our cable TV. We've got our telephone modem and our internet modem. This is not organized yet. In fact, I have to come in here and do a little bit of surgery. So that's not tidied up yet. So again, don't judge me on this because it's a work in progress. I have more than eight screens out there, so with only the eight outputs from the bright link, I needed three more. So actually right now I'm only using two more. So I have two more TVs and then I have another input coming from the bar area. Like the client can plug in a laptop or something in the bar and it'll come through one of the inputs on the bright link and then you can push that out to any of the other screens. I brought all the video cabling, the HD base T stuff here into the patch panel. So I've got five TVs inside an extra six that we're not using right now. Got the projector here. And then we've got one, two, three, four TVs outside. Those aren't even installed yet. We haven't even figured out how we're gonna or where we're gonna put those TVs out there. So those are just sitting there right now. These are just little JTEC Digital HD base T transmitters. You might look under something like an extender, like a HDMI over CAT6 extender. If you want to take a look at my audio rack, this is what we've got going on right now. There's a Furman power sequencer here, a DBX Zone Pro 1261. This is used for routing audio signals to different rooms and also for EQ. And then we have our amplifiers for the different zones here. These are really cost effective amplifiers. It's the QSC GX series, uh, GX5 and three GX3s. So anyway, I'm standing up here on a ladder right now, so it's a little jerky but I'm going to mount this bright link up above the rack with some sort of, you know, two space rack ears that are up here and then uh, some kind of tubing to keep it up a little bit because I need to get the bright link up off the top of the rack because I've got cooling fans up here. There's two of them, one on 
one here and one right underneath here. And then there's another two on this rack here. So I need to free those up a little bit. You can see under there, there's another cooling fan. So I wanna get those breathing freely. So I'm gonna raise this up as much as I can and then I'll tidy everything up by the time I'm done here. Sorry for the handheld video, but like I said, I'm standing on top of a ladder in this teeny little office. Okay, well that wraps up our little field trip here to the server room. You see the bright links up here. Uh, we're gonna go into the restaurant in a second. I'll show you some of the different screens we've got up. But one other thing I wanna point out right now is that there's an app that you can download to your phone to control this, to pick the inputs and outputs. And in order to do so, you need a serial number. There's no serial number on this. There's no paperwork with it. There's no serial number on the box. You have to email the company to get a serial number. So I've done that and I entered it into the app and I still can't get the app to work. It says that the device is not authorized. So that's something else I gotta work through to get this to work. Luckily, this restaurant isn't opening anytime soon, so I have plenty of time to work on it and work it out. So if, if you're thinking about getting a bright link like this, Hopefully this video could help you expedite that process a little bit. So we're going to take a look out in the restaurant real quick and I'll show you some of the screens we've got going on out there. Here's what we've got going so far. We've got three TVs up there above the bar. They're all showing cable TV right now. Uh, we'll have TVs four and five here on the wall. TV number four has not arrived yet. And we've got a projector up there. There's a projection screen. This television commercial has letterbox on it so that's why you're not seeing the top and bottom parts of that television commercial. That's a screen that I painted on with Goo Systems. Very expensive screen paint. It's about 350 bucks to do that screen right there. There was one problem with the bright link that I want to point out right now. This first TV here lost its connection like the matrix wouldn't connect with the receiver over HD base T. So I plugged in some different receivers with it and it made a connection. So I rebooted the matrix to factory settings and it has reestablished the link. So right now I'm a little concerned about the operation of this unit. However, hopefully we can work through these problems. This Brightlink system was about half the price of the other option I was looking at. This one was about 2,500 bucks. The other matrix I looked at was about $5,000. So hopefully the savings in price doesn't affect the performance and who knows? Uh, right now everything's looking really good and the clients are really happy so we're going to stick with it for now and see if we can't just work out a couple little problems i'll take just a quick second and show you some of the audio system stuff that i've got going on in here you might be interested in that as well these are the control panels for the dbx zone pro there's one of these for each zone this is the main bar area so you have control here for the dining room and also for the outside patio area and these are really convenient all you do is pick which source you want to listen to i'm going to turn this down and you can pick from whatever uh, Pandora, like a DMX Pandora commercial receiver. You've got your TV on there. If you have a performer on the stage, you can pick the stage from here. Check them out. Also, temporarily right now, I have a Raspberry Pi running Volumio, and you can stream music from like Spotify or whatever. This is just temporary until we get the Pandora working. And then what you do, so we'll put it on TV. You just turn the volume up. And it's got a mute switch on there. I like to install the DBX equipment. I think it's really reliable. It's real simple to operate. The main thing that I go for is simplicity and ease of use for the end user, who's going to be the client, the employees, that sort of thing. And they're not computer techs. They're not electronics engineers, and they're not recording engineers like I am. So what I'm going to do is give them like the most user-friendly thing I can find. And this is pretty much it here. You've got just the uh, input source select knob and the volume knob and simple as can be. You don't have to log into a computer, use an app or anything like that. If you need to get hands on real quick, you just reach over to the wall and turn the volume up or down or pick a different source. You know, for instance, if there's an emergency, say somebody has fallen or say somebody's had a heart attack, whatever, you need to just silence the room real quick. Um, I put in these volume knobs with the mute switch because to me that's the, like the most safety oriented way of doing things. Of course, there's more complicated ways. You can install a system that has an app or has you know, more complex wall controls. Uh, these are the most affordable ones I know of, and also they are 
the most user friendly. So we're gonna wrap up our field trip here to the restaurant. And I wanna apologize for the shaky camera work. I'm here by myself and it's really hot in here. And it's really uncomfortable. So I'm just trying to get out of here as fast as I can. Thanks so much for watching everybody. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please hit subscribe down there and come spend more time with me here at The Rock Studio.